Minister of St. Michael's, Alleluia, Christ is risen. My name is Stacey Kim, and I'll be your online chaplain this morning. I'll be with you in the chat on Zoom and in the comments on Facebook. A warm welcome to all visitors or anyone who is worshiping for us with us for the first time today, whether online or in person. We are eager to greet you and learn more about you. So stay tuned. We'll say more about getting connected to St. Michael's in just a little bit. Our service today includes a celebration of the Holy Eucharist. If you're joining with us from home, you can participate in this sacred meal symbolically. Just find something simple to eat and drink. Then when it's time for the Eucharist, you can join along with those in the sanctuary. It's a blessing to be gathered together in this hybrid, in-person and online St. Michael's space. Take a breath now. Allow yourself to rest here in God's presence. Come, let us worship in God together. And one more word of welcome from the back of the church to all of you. Happy Easter. If there are children here today or people who feel like children, we invite you to follow along in the procession. If you brought flowers, bring them with you. If you didn't, still come forward. And there are flowers up at the cross that we will be placing in the cross to make that a thing of beauty for us all today. So come along behind us as we process in today.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Alleluia. Together we pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who share and celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Easter, St. Michael's. My name is Jacob Partington. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall sound the weeping of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be an, in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. 
for, thou sh for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Blessed Easter, beloved St. Michael's. My name is Gregory Morris. Our second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to the Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem, they put him to death by hanging him upon a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, 
not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witness and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him shall receive forgiveness of the thin sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood outside weeping at the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw the two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know what, that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter, St. Michael's. Please be seated. It's been a long few years since we were able to do this, to celebrate in church together for Easter. What a great privilege. We never knew what a privilege it was. So welcome. Well, welcome back. In our household, which is next door, that is me and my family, We love watching funny movies and TV sketches, but even more than watching them, we love retelling them. We retell them over and over again, over dinner, enacting them one for another until somebody gets up and says, oh, we got to watch it again. And so searches YouTube and we watch the clip so we can laugh yet again because a really funny part never gets old. Every time you see it, you laugh all over again. I need more cowbell. Marriage is what brings us together. Are you Jeff Vader, head of catering? There's so many of these that are like our family punchlines and most of you are like, I don't know what she's talking about. (laughs) And if you sat at our dinner table, you wouldn't know either, but don't worry, we would get up and get the clip and we would show it to you because We all want to share this hilariousness together. We can even say just one word, not even the whole punchline, and we know exactly what it is. We all bust up laughing. Well, my friends, in our faith, we have a little punchline like that that's just a few words. It is, Christ is risen. It's like our family punchline, and you all respond back, he is risen indeed. Chortling, right? Because this glorious, wonderful few words says there is comedy after the tragedy. It's the punchline after the long buildup of the Jesus story. The long, hard darkness that we have just walked through this Holy Week. Being with Jesus in his passion and suffering. And the good news of today is we finally get to laugh. It is the risus pascalis what the early church called it, the Easter laugh, the supreme joke of the resurrection. The early church called it that, and ever since the church has had this tradition of telling stories, telling jokes, having there be levity and feasting and merriment on this day and all through the weeks to come during this season of Easter. Because on this day, all that dark doom stuff gets tossed out the window, and we are invited to relish and delight. Today is a day of feasting and merriment, of eggs and chocolate and sparkling drinks, so live it up. It feels good to be here in person getting to do that, and with you online as well, of course. But maybe some part of you is here a little bit thinking, I would like to be feeling that way, but I'm still not so sure. I only feel a little anxious about being here with these people, or I'm just carrying still a lot of what's been happening in the world. Maybe it's feeling too soon still to really laugh. You might have heard of the comedian Gilbert Gottfried, one of the most offensive comedians of our time who recently passed away. 
If you don't know who I mean, if you heard his voice, you would recognize him. And I'm not showing you a clip of him because <laughs> really not appropriate for church at all. And he would often get into big trouble for cracking jokes about tragedy, including famously one just mere weeks after 9-11 when nobody was ready to laugh. That as he said, the saying goes that tragedy plus time equals comedy. But I always say, why wait? <laughs> and as I heard that in a reflection after his death, I thought, well, there it is. That's God's line also. Why wait? Good Friday was just a couple of days ago. And yet here we are at Easter. From Good Friday, this dark day on the church calendar, a day of tragedy and loss and lamentation, the day where we finally blow out the last candle that is lit in the church, the candle there that signifies the presence of Christ, all is bleak. Jesus on the cross, all hope vanished. And maybe for some of us, Good Friday feels like how we have been living for two years or more. It might be how we're still feeling today. And yet God seems to want to interrupt that tragedy with comedy. To drop the punchline of the resurrection on the third day before we feel ready for it. And if we don't get the joke, God's ready to call us out by name. Even shake us a little bit to get us to see. Why wait to laugh? Don't you see? Well, we might all have different answers going inside of us right now for why it's hard for us to laugh. And one of the ways when we have stories from scripture that we can engage with it as not just this thing, the Bible, but a story that's about us is to imagine ourselves into it, to think about what it's like to be one of the characters there. So John's gospel that we just heard gives us a few different ways to identify ourselves in the story. We might be like Mary Magdalene at the very beginning of the story, in the dark, alone, searching for Jesus and weeping. That might describe us to a T right now. There is still a lot of darkness around us. The news is relentless. Death and fear continue all around the world and the images rolling to us daily out of Ukraine. And right here in our own city as well, this last week especially with the subway attack. And after all this COVID isolation and all this uncertainty, some of us have been in a spiritual dark night for so long that we've forgotten even how to search for God, or we've given up expecting to ever find him. But we came here today anyway, just in case. Something told us not to give up quite yet, and so we're here. Or we might be like Peter and the beloved disciple, coming to the tomb because somebody else told them to, coming and finding it empty except for burial wrappings, seeing that, trying to make some sense of it, but puzzled at what we are seeing here today. We know something is up. Maybe something in us remembers words that we heard earlier in our life or as a child. We hear echoes of that and what we see before us. We're with others we love, maybe they're puzzled too. Someone told us to come today, but we're not quite sure what to make of this all. And of course, we may just be here along for the ride, part of the crowd that's always out there on the edge of all the gospel stories. 
They always seem to be around. I heard there was free food. <laughs> Is there an egg hunt today? <laughs> That's okay. Jesus got a lot of people interested by giving out free food. <laughs> giving out free healings, too. We have some of those today as well. But just maybe, we might all be like Mary later in the story, after the guys have left to go back home. She's still weeping, still confused, and it is apparently still dark outside because John, the storyteller, doesn't say otherwise. And for John, that's a very significant thing, that it is dark. That's a symbol that he's trying to give us, the symbol of not being able to see. And that is different, by the way, in John from the other gospel writers. Everybody else shows this story happening at daybreak with the lights and dawn and birds, but for John, it's still dark. And Mary is blinded by her tears, and she is trying to see in the dark. And even after running to get these friends to come join her, nothing has cleared up for her, and now they've gone and left her, standing there alone in the cemetery, but then she sees the angels, and she turns around and sees Jesus, but she doesn't recognize him. And then through her confusion, Jesus speaks her name. And in that moment, she knows him. And she knows herself to be fully known and fully loved. I think this might be us. Our eyes have gotten pretty clouded over these last few years. Wave after wave of bad news and suffering. It can be hard to see signs of hope. Things get better and we think, now at last, and then something else comes along. It's hard even to keep looking for hope. Tears and gloom seem ready to return at any moment. But here we are again at church on Easter Sunday. We keep coming back. We keep waiting to hear God's good news. We might be weeping still. We might feel very much in the dark. But instead of wandering off distracted or giving up in despair, we show up and we linger because we want there to be more to the story. We're waiting for the punchline. And here's the good news of what Jesus shows us. We don't have to have all the sadness and the cobwebs shined away to be welcome. You can bring your weeping and be honest about it and be just as sad as you feel inside. You can be a hot mess and you can come in anyway. And you don't have to understand it all, what we're doing in church today or what the words or the actions mean or what you think about God. You can stumble through the darkness. You can wander around uncertain. You don't even have to know for sure what you're looking for. You just have to show up, which good for you, you've already done. And when you show up, you should be ready, ready to hear your name spoken in love and delight. Your name in a voice you would recognize if you heard it anywhere, even though it may be coming from a place you didn't expect. Because God is here too in this space, looking for you, full of life and love just for you, delighting with you, ready to laugh and to celebrate that you're here. Here today in church, but also just here in a place in your life that might just be ready for God's voice to speak and to be heard. My friends, we have weathered 
a lot in these last few years. And we will weather still more. Life isn't easy all the time for everyone, ever. And God never promised that it would be, remember. But we keep coming to the table, leaving our hearts just a little bit open. We keep going through the rituals, waiting to be surprised. We keep singing the songs, allowing them to draw out our tears, perhaps. We keep showing up. As the 12 Step slogan says, we keep coming back because it works. We come to church, we gather with community, we keep persevering and looking for hope. We put ourselves in times and spaces where God might just be waiting for us. Because before we're ready for it, when we're not expecting it, or maybe sometimes long past the point when we thought we would hear it, the punchline drops. And there is comedy at the end of our tragedy. And it's the best punchline ever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. And Jesus says, go tell everybody else too. Go share this laugh, this good news. Go spread the joy of this to others because they are all in darkness too. The world, people you know, people you love, are weeping and lost and confused, and they are not sure how much longer they can bear this. So why wait? Go call them by name. Go reach out to meet them where they are. Go tell them what you've seen and bring them God's light. Let the laughter of new life spread, even in our tragedy. Because Christ is risen. And when we share the news, we make it so. Over and over again. Happy Easter, everyone. And may God bless us with joy real, deep, lasting joy, today and forever. Amen. We are part of a faith that goes back thousands of years and has lasted through good times and bad. We now proclaim the strength of that faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Happy Easter, St. Michael's. My name is Sam Sue, and I'm here to lead you in the prayers of the people. Please add your own prayers in the silences, either aloud or in your heart, or by typing them into the chat box or comment bar. When I say, risen Lord, please respond, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God who has delivered us from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us lift our voices and pray, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings showered upon us, for our lives and for those whom we love, for the beauty of this home God has created for us, and for our families and our friendships. Let us give thanks to the God of life. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive work, works of God for our clergy and our bishops, for the many lay people who serve the church and serve the world through the church, and for those gathered here in worship and prayer. We pray for our partner parish, Emmanuel Church in West Hampstead, London, and for our friends at St. Luke's Church and School in Martel, Haiti. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and the peoples of the world that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline and that justice and peace may be lifted up. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, and those who struggle, and those who mourn. Audrey and family, Miria and Cecil, Prairie, Elijah and family, Joyce, Penny, Carla, Chris and Lane, Louise and Joe, Elizabeth, Wayne, that the hope born of Easter may give them peace, acceptance, and renewal, and that through their struggles, they may come into closer communion with the God who redeems and restores. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died. Jennifer Bailey, Sue Blake, that God may carry them from strength to strength and shine upon them the light of the resurrection.
Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Happy Easter, everyone. I invite you to find your seats again so we can continue on. And again, just a word of welcome. It is a joyful, beautiful day to be with you here in this space, online as well as in person. We'll make a few quick announcements, I promise, at the very end of the service, but right now I just want to say a welcome, especially if you're visiting today. We'd love to get to know you and hear more about you. So connect with clergy on the way out the door at the back of the church, or you'll see in your bulletin there's a couple of QR codes that you can go to that give you both information about things upcoming and a way to sign up to be on our mailing list and hear more. So we invite you to do that. And as we come into the celebration of Eucharist, Julie will say this again, but just a a first statement and a reminder that our table is open. All are welcome to come and receive. This is God's table. We know that we are invited guests, and so are all of us. So wherever you are in your journey today, please feel welcome to come and receive. And we'll do that up at the altar rail, which requires coming upstairs and getting to a place of kneeling if you're able, or standing if you can't but we'll also have it at the back of the church. So there's an option back there as well. So look for the easiest and closest way and come and get some free food. (laughs) So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for all.
give thanks to the Lord our God. and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. O oh God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for the one who died and rose for us. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, your own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming Christ's resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting Christ's coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with Mary the God-bearer, with the patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Michael and Jude, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past, we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Friends in Christ, again, 
This is the feast of the Lord and the table of the Lord and all are welcome at this table, whoever you are, wherever you are on your journey of faith. Come and receive. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Please join with me in our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Be seated for just a moment. What a great day. I want to say a big thank you because there have been so many people, so many hands going into helping us remember how we do this over this last week of Holy Week and then preparing the church to be so beautiful and so joyful today. So a huge thank you to so many people who have helped make all this possible. We could do a round of applause, why not? <laughs> And again, if you're visiting, we're so glad that you are here. If you go do that QR code and go to our information, you'll find out about all the stuff that is beginning from here on. This is a whole new season now on into uh, the springtime. So there will be small groups forming in just a few weeks' time. They will be meeting together throughout May and into June. There is a, uh, something we're calling the Sabbath Challenge that we are doing in partnership with our friends at Ancha Hezed as a way to ourselves in our own lives build in more holy rest and Sabbath with some support and participation in our two communities. So if you'd like to be part of that, there's information about that in the emails and the website. And then in a few weeks' time, we have our bishop, Andrew Dici, coming to visit us here at St. Michael's, and there will be confirmations and receptions and reaffirmation of baptismal vows, and so that will be a joyful, festive day as well. So we invite you to keep coming back. There is more and more on offer here, and this is a community ready to join you on your spiritual journey, wherever that is. And now, more important than anything, Eva is going to tell us about the Easter egg hunt. Big shoes to fill here. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Excellent. So, uh, as Reverend Kate has mentioned, there is an Easter egg hunt for our congregants uh, fifth grade and below. Um, as is our tradition, this will be a uh, Christian socialist Easter egg hunt, so uh, nobody's leaving with tears and everyone's leaving with eggs and chocolate. <laughs> so for those of you who are uh, of Easter egg hunt age, again that's fifth grade and below, you can go to the doors to the right, out to the back garden. If you get lost, we will be in the back and we can lead you there. Happy Easter everyone! So please stand now for our final blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us God's children through the resurrection of God's Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever.
forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.